Okay, so we will continue with MapReduce. We had a brief overview about what is MapReduce the last time, and now we will talk in more details about MapReduce, and then we will see the Hadoop distributed file system. So we are continuing with, with MapReduce. So what is MapReduce? We, we mentioned the last time that it is a programming model, so it is just a model that we are following. Uh, we can implement uh, anything in the map function or in the reduce function. We can place the code of our choice and the reason uh, we have this uh, programming model is to be able to more efficiently uh, handle large amounts of data in a, in a distributed, distributed environment. Uh, so the, if we think of Unix, there are specific commands that we can run on Unix to do very similar things as what we are doing with MapReduce. For example, uh, with the MapReduce we get first an input, and so uh, the commands in Unix for that we have our input. In the mapper phase, what we have been doing, what we have seen, an example that we've seen was the word count. So we were counting unique words and also in our exercise we were searching for unique values of a particular attribute or property and and so this you and you need to be done with grab command and this grab command is in the the uh, exercise that we gave you today so the grab command can search for specific strings within the text and it has a lots of properties, uh, other properties for text processing. Uh, sort command, we can sort the results. Uh, with MapReduce, we can sort them or shuffle them. And then, unique is picking up the unique, specific unique values. So in the reducer phase, uh, um, the results are combined by a specific <coughs> unique property. And finally, the output is produced. So in Unix, there are specific commands that can produce the output. So it does look like a pipeline, uh, like a Unix pipeline. Uh, we, so with this MapReduce, we have um, an efficient uh, way to, to process this large amounts of data. And an interesting idea is what do we do with the streaming data? So it is a good idea to also use it for streams, streams of data. There are a lot of applications that it can be used for. Some of these applications we already mentioned uh, here. For example, categorizing a library, sorting elections, uh, orders on Amazon.com, but there are many others like uh, web search engines, building indexes for web pages or processing of large uh, logs for web servers because web servers obviously are logging all the uh, connections every time we uh, a client requests a page from the web server the information about the client their IP address and what page they requested and what time they made that request is all uh, recorded in a log and imagine some huge server like Google with thousands and millions of requests per second it has a pretty large log file. So the MapReduce data flow, how, do, how does it work look like? Alright, so we mentioned we have this because it is running over Hadoop and the Hadoop has these multiple nodes. Each node is a, a separate computer that can do some computation and so in in this node uh, we have several mappers so each mapper is doing some processing so first we get an input data and it goes into mappers for processing in each node there could be multiple mappers the mappers are producing some intermediate outputs so that's why we get this intermediate data from the mappers. Let's say the mappers are doing, they take a key value pair, they're doing some processing and some record, and in the output again they produce uh, 
two things, key and value, which can be given uh, as, an, as an input key to the reducer. So <coughs> that's why we have this intermediate name. Uh, then we have the values are exchanged uh, by a shuffle process. So these things are either uh, sorted or shuffled, and they are given to reducers from, from any of the mappers. Um, so reducers can get output from multiple mappers together. Like this one got output from all of these three mappers. Reducer is running on the other node and uh, it is just doing some logic. So reducer is processing the generated outputs, but mostly what it is doing is all of these multiple uh, outputs are combined <coughs> together in the reducer process to, uh, to give the final result to the user. So we have basically taken the data because it is very large, we split it into multiple pieces and each mapper was doing some processing on a piece of the data that passed it to the reducer who completed the processing, sorted and arranged the result into a single answer uh, that is given to the user. For example, over here we wanted to get the unique value and so the final output will come from the reducer for these unique values for, for the attribute or column X of the data. Or the final result is, let's say, for the word count, how many words, unique words do we have in the text. So the MapReduce has some features that uh, there are also some helper processes that we can use. For example, in that uh, intermediate step, when multiple mappers produce the same result, we could do some combining of these results before giving <coughs> the users. The, so the idea of map use is to, if we want to and more make this process more efficient we could we could do load balancing so that would improve uh, to improve the load balancing or uh, we could think about uh, faster recovery from from failed tasks so the we mentioned that uh, one of the advantages is here uh, one of the groups said that it's fault tolerant it is called tolerant, tolerant because the Hadoop it is running over Hadoop and Hadoop is managing these data nodes. If one of them fails, then uh, it will automatically assign the failed task to another node to re-execute it until all of the tasks are completed. So, and we can think of how we can optimize that process to be able to faster recover, but if we have a very large cluster, then it is expected and obvious that some of these nodes will fail, and we need to be aware of that and be prepared to handle that. So the Hadoop will pick up the failed nodes and assign their task to, to be re-executed on, on another uh, working node. What other optimizations we can think of? the data itself. So the data is divided into pieces and given to these multiple nodes. All right, so where are the multiple pieces placed? It makes a difference where they're placed because if they are uh, very far away, then it will take a long time to get to them. So bandwidth is a problem. The bandwidth is the amount of data that we can transfer per second on, on a particular um, network channel or connection. So the amount of data that we can transfer per second could be a problem if we have a lot of data <laughs> or if the connection is slow. Using the MapReduce over this distributed uh, file system that we're going to talk about uh, in a moment is, is a good solution because the MapReduce gives us the advantages that we had here, organizing the data, scalable, uh, and, and the Hadoop is 
in the background handling your fault tolerance and where and assigning where all these pieces are going to be on this network cluster so that it works in the in, a, in an efficient way. How are, how do we work in an efficient way? Well, we can schedule the map task close to the inputs when when it is possible. This way, we're going to minimize this network traffic. We want to have as few network traffic as possible because the network is very slow compared to, let's say, transfer data from your main memory to the CPU and transfer data from here to uh, another computer somewhere on the network. If we think about this um, word count example, so the last time we said that we can give a simple, no, we didn't give that problem, but I will give this for next time this program. Um, a program is, uh, an example program in MapReduce is to get a text and count all the words in the text and just see how many times a particular word happened. So if we, if we think about this, that will be a word count example, then the input, the value will be the lines of text or the whole text, and the output will be the key is particular word and an integer, the number of times that this word happened. The reducer will take the word and the value, so the, the word and its count, and it's going to sum these counts together. So if it gets the same word several times, it will increment the count. much a batch system so when a MapReduce job is launched it is a batch job and it is submitted in a sequence to the cluster so the cluster is going to do the first job then the next job and the next job so in order to start this uh, MapReduce we have to submit a job to the cluster this uh, just illustrates the word count example with some with some uh, objects here, some geometric figures. So each figure is considered a different word, for example, or it could be another object, doesn't have to be word. But if we think about counting words, you can choose each uh, uh, object as a word. So let's say <coughs> the, um, the circle is one word, the star is another word, and the the green square is another word. These are all the words. Well, the, the first uh, rectangle here is a, a fraction of the data. So this part of the data is taken and it is given to, so this is the raw data, that's the input, and it is given to a map function. So that part of the data is given to a map function. What is the map function doing? As you can see, it picked up these two diamonds and put them on the top, and next the two circles, and next the square. And then, so it is pretty much sorting them. The reducer is going to take all of these outputs and combine them together to give the end result. So it picked up the two diamonds from here, the two from here, and we have them in the top two circles from here, one from here, and three circles. One square from here, two from here, three squares. And so it says I have four diamonds, three circles, three squares, three stars, and three triangles. And that is in the, in the reducer function. If we think of this as a, as a text, this is the input. It's text file, a bunch of words. Um, it is, has to be separated into pieces to give each piece to a, a different machine. So the first line uh, goes to the first node or first mapper. And then the next line and the next line. <laughs> and so the mapper picks up each word, it has a key the word and value the, the count. Uh, in this 
particular sequence, we have beer one time, beer one time, river one time. Shuffling. So this shuffling, um, or sorting, it is putting together the names, the, the words with the same, the same words together. So we have there is here and there comes. Now, that output is given to the reducer, uh, which is adding the counts together, so it is just increments. And another job of the reducer is to produce final result in a single answer. So all of the reducers have to work together, because we have four reducers here, one, two, three, four, and produce the final single, single result. This is an example program, and which does this word count, and the reason I ask you to install this so there today and log into our cluster is because the next time we'll be running this program. So we're going to give you this program and just ask you to run it uh, on the cluster and see what output you will get. We will use two text files. One text <coughs> one is very short with four lines of uh, some data mining uh, results in the form of rule that we extracted from some database. And the next file is just a textbook. It's a book about some animals that was written, and it's a text file full of text. And so, uh, so that's what that is also going to be the project of the first group. And I also want to talk about the project because um, we didn't have much time to talk next time. But this is a um, a program that is my produced program that actually implements what we just said. And so uh, this is a class for it, map, which extends map in space and implements a mapper. And these are the, the inputs that it takes. And then you can write the map function here. So the map function will take the key and value pair that we talked about. And you can give the output uh, to a writable text file. And so it is taking a value. Uh, it considered value to the string because it is text. And then it can do some uh, processing on the text by co calling string tokenizer. So this, this is in Java. So while the tokenizer has the next token, then uh, uh, <coughs> then continue processing until you you have no more uh, values in the tokenizer, and so it is going to uh, collect an output, the word, and assign a, a count to it, which count is one in this case. The reducer function, uh, same thing. It reduces. It extends my produce base. <coughs> uh, and what it does, it just increments the counts. So uh, it takes the value and plus increments it uh, until there is a next value and finally uh, writes the output. So output collect the key and the new song. So the word with the number of times that the word happened. 